am Rafa Benito. Uh, you are watching the Redman TV. Hello Redmen TV fans, my name is Jack Reeve, coming over from Talk Norwich City today and Paul and Chris have asked me to do a bit of a tactical look at the current Norwich squad. Now I've got the players and the team set up on the whiteboard behind me. I really do wish I had a setup like the Redmen TV, but unfortunately the office whiteboard's going to have to do for today. So let's start off at the back then. Declan Rudd, a lot of you guys probably don't uh, know of Declan Rudd and I don't really blame you if you don't. Declan Rudd is a local lad uh, who came through the Youth Academy and he isn't actually too young anymore. He's 25 years old. He spent uh, loan, de uh, loan spells at um, Preston, uh, performed excellently in the youth setup, and that meant he could get into the first team because John Ruddy hasn't been the same this season. Uh, you guys probably remember him pulling off incredible saves at Anfield and things like that, but John Ruddy really has lost his sort of um, aggression and, in, and his leadership skills that made him such a fantastic goalkeeper. So Declan Rudd's come in and he's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, I think I saw a stat he's made only two less saves than Simon Mignolet this season in 12 less games. This guy knows how to save a football. So he's in goal. Um, now this back line, I'm, I kind of am as knowledgeable on it as you guys because we've got two new guys here. We've got Ivo Pinto who came in. Uh, sort of a, a right wing back, uh, came through the ranks at Porto, uh, and then we got him, uh, got him in from there. Uh, we've got Ryan Bennett, who you guys are probably familiar with. He's been in our, in our setup for a while now, a really solid player, good in the air, just a really good defender who doesn't normally make mistakes. Now this guy, Close, Tim Close, record signing for Norwich City, £9.5 million pounds on this man, a million pounds more than our previous record signing, which was Ricky Van Wolfswinkle. Came in from Wolfsburg, Champions League calibre player, left-sided, six foot four. Hopefully this will really shore up our defensive line because we have conceded a whopping 38 goals this season. So we really did need Tim Close in there. And then Robbie Brady at left back, he sort of switched between either left midfield or left back this season. He's been our player of the season. He's been absolutely superb. Um, and it just means that Pinto is, is an attacking player, so he can go forward and so can Brady. Brady's created the most amount of chances for us this season. I believe uh, Chris said that Alberto Moreno has created the most amount of chances for you. So I'm expecting a real battle down the left-hand side in this game. Uh, so that'll be really good to see. But... Let's move into the midfield now. And once again, it's a really changed midfield from what we usually see. I'm not sure if Alex Neal actually knows his starting 11 or whether he changes it depending on the opposition. I'm going for more, for more the latter there. But Nathan Redmond, you may be surprised about what I'm about to say, but Nathan Redmond has actually been under a lot of criticism this season from Norwich City fans. People say he's greedy. People say he doesn't deliver as much. And it's getting to the stage now where he's going to have to start developing from this potential sort of wonder kid into a player who can actually turn up week in, week out in the Premier League. Nonetheless, though, he's a player who can create chances like that. He's quick, he's pacey, he's skillful. Nathan Redmond, once again, he'll be bombing up. So this right-hand side could be left very exposed if Pinto and Redmond start going on and jolly down the right-hand side. The midfield pairing of Tete and Halson. Halson is our top goal scorer this season with four goals. He scored some fantastic and crucial goals this season, although he has been wasted out on the right in a lot of games because we have lacked a bit of depth down that right-hand side and Housen usually plays in, in the role of Redmond um, when we play bigger teams and more attacking teams. So don't be surprised if Redmond's dropped out of this squad and Housen's moved out into the right and maybe Dorans or Malumbu comes into the middle to really make this a, a defensive midfield too. Tete loves to drop in deep, Housen loves to bomb forward. That's normally quite a nice balance. But as I said, don't be surprised if you see the likes of Yusuf Malumbu or Graham Dorans coming in this role to really make it a defensive midfield too to try and um, counteract your attacking flair. Down the right hand side, 100% shot accuracy, Mr. Matthew Jarvis. Being wonderful, he's been out for the majority of the season though with injury, which is a real shame because he's a really good player, he's quick and he's direct. We've got no other player like Matthew Jarvis in our team and he's going to be a real threat to Liverpool because he's so quick, he's so direct and he's got a fantastic final delivery on him. And when you get balls into this guy, Di Mercy and Bacani, there's going to be danger. In behind the striker... Our new signing, Stephen Naismith. I fully expect him to start this weekend uh, in place of Wes Houlihan. He was getting a bit old. He's had to be playing week in, week out, mainly because of the lack of depth in the squad. And Stephen Naismith, I think, is going to be a very crucial player for us this season if we do want to stay up. Uh, he scored goals 
Um, he scored goals against you guys. I'd be wary of Stephen Naismith because when you've got the wingers bombing forward, it allows the midfield too just to drop in a bit and Naismith to have sort of this free roll in around here. When he gets in them areas, he's going to pr uh, cause problems. That's very exciting for me. And then finally, the striker, Dear Mercy and Bakani, he's a Congolese giant. He's absolutely fantastic. I think he scored something like four goals this season. Um, but last game against Bournemouth, he did miss a couple of crucial chances. And you can tell that he's not a top, top striker because he bar top strikers would bury the chances that he's had this season. He's fairly wasteful in front of goal, but he's so clever. He moves so well, which means he creates chances for himself pretty much. So that's kind of the way we play. Um, we try and get it down the wings and whip balls in. But once again, there has been a bit of criticism from Norwich City fans that say we're just playing too direct. We've been playing the likes of Vadis Adidja Rafo, Dorans, Malumbu down the middle and then shifting like Housen out on the right and Brady into this position, which means we're very narrow. That's when we play our worst football. The best type of football we play is when we whip out the balls to Nathan Redmond, Matty Jarvis or Brady or Housen even on that right hand side and start to attack down the flanks. That's the format we like to play in. The solid midfield pairing, wing backs bombing forward, wingers bombing forward, a solid defensive uh, midfield too, and then the tall, powerful centre forward of Dia Mercy and Bacardi. Thank you so much for watching this tactical video. If you've got any questions for me, leave it in the comments of this video and I'll be sure to get back to you. Subscribe to Redmen TV because, well, they're just great guys producing fantastic content on the daily. If you've enjoyed what I've had to say, come over to my channel, Talk Norwich City. I'm sure the guys will leave links in the description for that. Come over there, say hello, watch some videos, uh, and I hope you enjoy them. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on Saturday at Carrow Road. See you later. Hello, Redmen TV fans. My name is Jack Reeve, coming over from Talk Norwich City today. The guys at Redmen TV have asked me to do my top five reasons why Norwich will beat Liverpool this weekend.